When World War I settled into stalemate, rain became as dangerous as artillery. Trenches collapsed, dugouts flooded, and temporary shelters rotted from the top down. Soldiers quickly learned that staying dry was not a matter of comfort, but survival. Wet uniforms led to trench foot, respiratory illness, and exhaustion. Yet in the middle of this mud-soaked war, a particular type of roof cloth quietly proved its worth. Long before modern synthetics, armies relied on treated fabric roofs, that resisted rain for months under constant exposure. Understanding how this cloth worked, why it succeeded where ordinary canvas failed, and how it was applied in the field, reveals a forgotten chapter of wartime material science that still matters today. Why did ordinary canvas fail almost immediately in trench warfare? Well, standard canvas absorbed water. Once it became saturated, it sagged, pooled rain, and eventually leaked. In static trench systems, roofs made from untreated fabric basically became sponges that trapped moisture overhead. Constant dampness encouraged mould, weakened the fibres, and caused seams to fail. Soldiers actually reported dugout ceilings dripping continuously, even after the rainfall had stopped. The problem wasn't really the intensity of the rain, but rather the prolonged exposure. Canvas that performed adequately for tents during short campaigns simply could not survive the relentless conditions of trench warfare. Faced with this failure, military engineers turned to techniques that actually predated industrial coatings. European armies had long histories of waterproofing sails, wagon covers and field shelters. During the war, these older methods were adapted for mass production. The solution was not plastic or rubber sheets, which were, you know, scarce and brittle but tightly woven cloth treated with oils, waxes, and mineral compounds. The goal was to block water penetration while still allowing the fabric to flex without cracking. So, what made the First World War roof cloth different from ordinary fabric? Well, the roof cloth used in shelters and dugouts was typically heavy cotton or linen, woven with an exceptionally tight weave. Now, this weave by itself already slowed water entry, but honestly, it was the treatment that made the real difference. Fabrics were impregnated with linseed oil, paraffin wax, or sometimes tar-based solutions, and then cured to allow these substances to penetrate deep into the fibres. Unlike just a surface coating, these treatments actually bonded within the cloth structure itself. Water would bead and run off instead of soaking through. And, importantly, the cloth remained flexible in both cold and heat, which helped prevent those tiny micro-cracks that could cause leaks. How did soldiers install roof cloth to maximise waterproofing? Well, installation mattered just as much as the material itself. Roof cloth was always pitched with the pronounced slope to keep water from standing. Soldiers overlapped sections generously, making sure that upper layers always covered the lower seams to direct runoff away from the joints. Seams were often brushed with extra waterproofing compound or covered with wooden battens. In dugouts, the cloth was laid beneath a layer of earth or sod, creating a drainage layer above the fabric. This combination really turned rain into a managed flow rather than a direct threat. So why did this cloth survive months of constant rain? The strength of First World War roof cloth lay in its resistance to saturation. 
Because water never fully penetrated the fibers, the cloth didn't gain significant weight. This prevented sagging and seam stress. And, you know, the oil-treated fibers also resisted rot and mildew, which was absolutely critical in those damp environments. Field reports describe shelters remaining dry through entire seasons, even when surrounding trenches were knee-deep in water. When maintenance was required, reapplication of oil or wax restored waterproofing without replacing the fabric. How this technology compared to rubberized alternatives? Rubberized fabrics existed during the First World War, but they were expensive, heavy, and prone to cracking under temperature changes. Once cracked, they failed catastrophically. The treated cloth roofs, by contrast, degraded gradually. Even when partially worn, they continued shedding water. This reliability made them ideal for semi-permanent structures. Armies favoured them not because they were perfect, but because they were predictable and repairable in the field. Now let's talk about how modern survivalists can actually apply these same principles. You see, modern canvas tarps can be treated using wax or oil-based compounds, which honestly can dramatically improve waterproofing. The key steps are using tightly woven fabric, applying the treatment evenly, and then allowing full curing time. Don't rush that bit. Roof pitch, as always, remains absolutely critical. No waterproofing method will succeed if water is allowed to pool. That's just a fact. Overlapping seams, protecting the stitching, and even adding sacrificial layers above the cloth, well, all of these can extend the service life of your shelter. These methods, by the way, are particularly useful for long-term camps, historical reenactment shelters, or off-grid structures where synthetic materials might fail or degrade over time. Why, you might ask, did breathability and flexibility matter more than total sealing? Well, one reason the First World War roof cloth truly succeeded was that it struck this careful balance between waterproofing and breathability. Complete sealing, you see, traps condensation inside the shelters, which just creates more internal dampness. The treated cloth, on the other hand, allowed just a minimal amount of vapour to transfer while still blocking liquid water. This clever approach reduced interior moisture build-up, a detail, honestly, that's often overlooked by modern designs that focus solely on impermeability. Soldiers really noticed that these roofs stayed dry from both sides, rain above, condensation below. So, what exactly does this forgotten material teach us about wartime problem-solving? The First World War waterproof roof cloth was hardly glamorous, and it certainly didn't change the course of battles or appear in any headlines. Yet it kept soldiers functional in conditions that would have otherwise broken them. It stands as a prime example of innovation driven by necessity, grounded in material knowledge, and, well, refined through field use rather than just theory. Its success, quite simply, reminds us that effective solutions often come from improving what already exists, not replacing it entirely. If this deep dive into overlooked First World War technology added value to your understanding of history and survival, then do subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this video with fellow history enthusiasts and, you know, help keep these practical lessons from the past alive.